Hi guys and welcome to Winter School Finally. It's English FAL and Grade 12s. I hope that you are joining in. Today we've got Vino with us. Hello. How are you, Vino? I'm good at you. I'm uh, so excited for the show. English is my favourite. And your passion best. from the last time I here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. I actually, I actually managed to get a distinction in in English in in matric. It was one of my strongest subjects. Excellent. It Good was stuff. amazing. So guys, I hope that you are all tuning in and you've got your little booklets that you're working through. Um, Vino, you want to take a step um, to your little board while well, I give them a little preamble about the competition. And I will see you shortly. She will indeed, guys. Guys, if you haven't seen our um, competition, it's pretty, pretty awesome. You can um, win these awesome CDs. Okay, so today we're giving away the Lulu Dekana CD. And we're giving away now. Now that's what I call music. Thanks to Universal, they are guys. They rock. Um, and obviously, this is all about learning. We want you guys to do super, super well. We're also giving away one of our mindset textbooks of your choice, as well as our awesome "I'm a Mindsetter" um, T-shirt. They're awesome. We've all got one. Ty's got one. Kaklejo's got one. I've got one, and they are absolutely rocking. And the way you can win these competition goods is on the Facebook events wall, as well as through SMSing our line on the SMS line. I'll be posting that number up on Facebook. Um, and I think Vino, take it away. Alrighty. Welcome. Today we're looking at um, English paper one. Uh, which is the comprehension language um, and the summary paper. Uh, we're looking at the paper from November, December of last year. So we'll start with the comprehension. And if you've had some time to have a look at this paper, and you should have, um, you should be fairly familiar with the passage. The passage is called Baby Fat. Um, childhood obesity has been described as one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century. Couple of rules for before you attempt the comprehension passage. You never, under any circumstances, read the passage just once and attempt the questions. The um, normal rule is you read the passage for the first time. You need not have a pencil or anything in hand. Just read the passage for the first time. Allow yourself to become comfortable with the passage. Read the questions once over. Thereafter, you read the passage with a pencil in your hand and you underline important points. So bottom line is that you never begin to answer the questions on your after your first reading. There is, I don't think, anybody who can attempt a comprehension passage after only one reading of a passage. So at minimum, you should read this passage at least twice, at least twice before answering those questions. Let's look at the first paragraph. It is just puppy fat. She will grow out of it. Children need to eat as much as possible to grow. The extra kilos only mean he has a healthy appetite. These common misunderstandings about children who are overweight or obese just do not hold true anymore. In fact, the World Health Organization, which monitors health matters worldwide, describes childhood obesity as one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century. Now guys, you need to look at this passage carefully, at the first paragraph carefully. It's just puppy fat. It's just puppy fat. Have you heard that before? It's just puppy fat. If, when you look at the word puppy fat, what comes to mind? What do you think of? Puppy fat. Somebody that's slightly overweight, probably you, your, um, your relatives have referred to someone as just having a bit of puppy weight. She will grow out of it. Children need to eat as much as possible to grow. These are now, think about where have you heard this before. Try and contextualize the passage. Try and uh, put it into a situation that you've probably heard something like this before, such that it facilitates your understanding, it helps you to understand. The extra kilos only mean he has a healthy appetite. Common excuses that people come up with when children are overweight. These common misunderstandings Immediately, you, you need to look at the word misunderstandings. Common misunderstandings, meaning that which was mentioned above. Not true. These are misunderstandings. About children who are overweight or obese, just, sorry, just do not hold true anymore. These are not true anymore. In fact, the World Health Organization, World Health Organization, this is, a, um, this is an, an international body. This problem occurs throughout the world. 
which monitors health matters worldwide, describes childhood obesity, childhood obesity, children who are overweight, as one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century. As one of the most serious public health challenges of the 21st century, the world has got a lot to worry about. But one of those things, one of those serious issues that are coming up in the 21st century is um, childhood obesity. Okay, the second paragraph. Glo globally, in 2007, an estimated 22 million children. Take a second to look at this number. 22 million children under the age of five years were overweight. Look at the word globally, which ties up with World Health Organization, telling you that this is an international problem. In South Africa, 17% of children between one and nine years are overweight. What does that tell you? This is not an isolated incident. This is not an isolated problem uh, that's happening in other parts of the world. It's, it's happening here in our country. For these children, the risk of becoming overweight adults and catching various illnesses increases in a big way. Now, they are referring to the actual crux of this passage, which is children, which is children that are overweight. And, and what can be the result of that in, in the future? These children are at the risk of becoming overweight adults and catching various illnesses, right? You should know from comprehensions that you have studied previously that as you are reading, certain facts should stick out in your mind because in your practice comprehensions, there are certain obvious things that you know the examiner is going to ask you. Possibly one of the questions they will ask you is, um, with childhood obesity, what are, some of the, what are some of the repercussions of childhood obesity later on in life? How can this affect you later on in life? How can this become an adult problem? In addition, overweight or in addition, together with this, with becoming an overweight adult and, carrying, um, and catching various illnesses, in addition to that, obese children may struggle with emotional issues. Now, Physically, you can become overweight when, uh, as an adult, if you are an obese child, or you can have uh, diseases, but there are also mental implications of that. You, can have, you may struggle with emotional issues like discrimination. Emotional issues like discrimination and poor self-image. So already, they have mentioned four effects um, of childhood obesity that moves on into adulthood. You can become an obese adult or you could have um, you can contract certain diseases but, or you mentally you will have mental issues like discrimination or you can have a poor s or you will have poor self image the important thing that we need to draw to your attention as you are reading you need to absorb the information because basically once you absorb the information you will understand the information once you understand the information the questions become a little bit more direct paragraph 3 in some cases what children inherit from their parents? Inherit, in think of the word inherit, to gain, to get something. In some cases, what children inherit from their parents can be blamed for weight gain. That is, what you get your, from your parents, what you've received from your parents is the reason why you are gaining weight. However, lifestyle issues, lifestyle issues, lifestyle, the way you are living your life, most often play a role in children becoming overweight, especially in recent times. According to, world, world health to the World health, health Organization, one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons for childhood obesity is the steady gl global shift in diet towards energy-dense foods, which are high in fat, high in fat and sugar, but low in nutrients. So essentially the food we're eating, is the food children are eating is too high in fat and sugar, but low in nutrients. Now once you've come to this part of the passage, allow yourself to think a little, what else, what else would contribute to children becoming obese? Poor, poor exercise, poor diet possibly, and poor exercise. Another reason for weight gain, another reason for weight gain, they could possibly ask you what is another reason for weight gain besides poor diet? is decreased physical activity. 
decreased physical activity. As you are reading, you are expected to go through the passage this way. As I mentioned earlier, the first reading is just for you to absorb the essence of the passage. Basically, what is this passage about? But this process should be happening on your second reading. You should be underlining. When I mentioned earlier, you should need to have a pencil in your hand and on second reading, underline important facts, important ideas. This is how you go about doing that. The World Health Organization, again, this is the third time that this organization has been mentioned in this passage, mentions that this is the result of the inactive nature of many forms of entertainment, changing forms of transport, and increasing urbanization. All right? For when they talk about decreased physical activity, they've given you three examples of, of decreased um, physical activity. All right. The inactive nature of many of many forms of entertainment, changing forms of transport, and increasing urbanization. So, they have deliberately given you these three forms. There is a good possibility that one of your <coughs> questions will ask, will ask this type of a question. They will say to you, mention three forms of decreased physical activity that is responsible for children becoming overweight. And once you've underlined, it just becomes easier for you, for you to answer this question. In South Africa, safety concerns can be added to this, to this list. Fearing for their children's safety, parents may refuse to let them ride their bicycles or walk to school. In an exam, they, they, are, they, they can even ask you for four, uh, four reasons or four ways that decreased physical activity levels have contributed to childhood obesity. This here is the hidden fourth reason that you're looking for, meaning that in South Africa, things are dangerous. People do, parents do not want their children to be walking to school, and then they are transporting their children to school, hence resulting in less physical activity, hence re resulting in childhood obesity. We're only going to be looking at three of five of these paragraphs. Parents, let's underline this, safety concerns. Parents may refuse to allow their children to walk to school or ride their bicycles. Parents need to manage their child's weight. While inherited causes need to be managed medically, lifestyle factors, lifestyle, the way we live our lives, can be changed or improved. The sooner you start, the better, says Brad Bing, the driving force behind Sporting Chance, which is a youth sports development agency. So we know that this man, Brad Bing, is the driving force, that means somebody who is in the lead, somebody who is uh, spearing this, this project, behind the Sporting Chance, which is a youth sports development agency. Possible exam question, what is the driving force, oh, sorry, uh, behind Sporting Chance, and what are they responsible for? You will need to find that answer here, which will tell you um, youth sports development agency. They are responsible. What, what do you understand by youth sport development agency? People who encourage you to participate in sport, to be more active. He says, research shows that children begin their lifestyle patterns by the age of 12. Therefore, it is important that children eat healthily and lead an active lifestyle as early as possible in order to adopt these practices later in life. That is just the first five paragraphs that we're going to touch on. All right? Um, Something I, I want to draw to your attention is that lifestyle patterns by the age of 12. So you need to bear that in mind, that ch uh, children begin their lifestyle patterns by the age of 12. And it's important for children to start eating healthy and lead an active lifestyle so that these become uh, the ways of life, the way they live their lives later on. Okay. Fina? Uh, yes. I think what we're going to do is we're going to take a little short break, if that's okay. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, guys, I know that I missed out the competition question, so I will be telling you what it is right now. We have posted it onto our events wall, and that is one way that you can enter the competition, is that you need to go to our events tab, and it's English FAL for Tuesday. Go on there, check out the question, and get answering. If you can't make it to Facebook, there are other ways of winning. And what you can do is what you need to do is you need to email the code, the specific code, you will see it during the break. The question will come up. Email win at learnextra.co.za or you can post it in our pep text group and the group code is learn extra and you get the free download at pepclub.mobi. And that's free guys. 
that and all you have to do is go to pepclub.mobi, download it, and then from there on, it's free. Um, or what you can do is SMS 0834 one zero. So guys, those are the four ways to win. I will be posting it up on Facebook and on Twitter so you can see it then and there. And now for the question. And here it is. So keep your eyes peeled. The question is, the object placed on the table, the object was placed on the table. The sentence is an example of A, direct speech, B, passive voice, or C, active voice. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break, get yourself a glass of water, a cup of tea, and join in to learn more and learn extra winter school rocks. And thanks to Liberty, you guys rock for making this all possible. See you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. Winter school, finally it's here. We've been waiting so, so long. Well, I know I have. I've been so excited for winter school. Guys, if you are tuning in, don't forget you can chat to us on facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Also chat to me on Twitter at learn extra. Um, guys, the page is for you. So if you do post questions and you guys want to get into a conversation about it, you want to get into a discussion about it, that is completely fine too. Um, there's no reason why you can't help each other out. Don't forget we are chatting on our events page wall that is Tuesday English FAL it's all happening there on the events wall I just want to say hello to Koshifa for joining in Snazo all of the the regulars guys let me know if you're watching just yeah it's awesome to know and chat to me that's what I'm here to do uh, Vino you ready absolutely take it away all right we're done with the reading of the passage. We're done with the underlining of the important aspects of the uh, pieces of information that you will have to remember to answer these questions. Let's get into the questions. Read both text A and text B. In our case, we're looking at text A because of the limited time. And answer the question set. Ref text A. You need to read this, which means all of these questions will be based on text A. Refer to paragraph 1. This is the excellent thing about this paper. Um, they will tell you exactly which um, paragraph the answer is in, which is actually a good clue, if you ask me. Refer to paragraph 1, 1.1.1, .1 which two words, it's written in capital letter because they only want two words. Do not go and find all the words in the passage. It will be time consuming. You're going to be wasting valuable time. List which two words, sorry, which two words mean the same as extra kilos during childhood. Nobody's taken the passage away from you. You have access to this passage in the exam. Remove the passage for easy access. Have the passage on the side and the questions on the side so that you can refer to it easily. I'm going to just go back to that passage. The question was two words for extra kilos. All right? Which two words could, can we identify here that mean the same as extra kilos? We've got puppy fat, we've got overweight, we've got obese, but obviously you just need to find two. So any two words from paragraph one, childhood obesity, any two words from paragraph one that tell you, or that mean the same thing as extra kilo. So any two words from here, all right? Um, I just want to draw your attention to something if you are taking the Questions directly out of the passage, you need to place your words in inverted commas. Please remember this for future questions. When they ask you to quote from the passage or identify in the passage and you are removing the words directly from the passage, you are not changing them, you need to make sure that they are in inverted commas um, so, that you s you so that you indicate to the examiner that you've taken them out of the passage and that you acknowledge that they are not your own words. All right, question two. Using your own words, I want to draw your attention to these words. Using your own words. This is testing understanding. They want to test whether you have understood the passage. Nowhere here does it say quote, so you're not allowed to, to remove large chunks from the passage. Using your own words, write down two common misunderstandings about childhood obesity. Remember what we did earlier when we read the passage? I asked you to underline, um, underline certain facts, underline certain bits of important information. This is where that comes in.
It is just puppy fat. Remember, we had underlined this. Children need to eat, I forgot this one. Children need to eat as much as possible to grow. The extra kilos only mean it's a healthy appetite. Guys, they these do not hold true anymore. So they just want you to identify. Let's go back to that question. Using your own words, write down two common misunderstandings. Remember that part about this do, does not hold true anymore? Two common misunderstandings about childhood obesity. And what are the common misunderstandings? Here we go. Number one, that it's just puppy fat. So you would say the passage mentions that uh, when children are overweight, it's just puppy fat, meaning that it's not exactly just puppy fat. You could have said, children need to eat as much as possible. Do not remove it from the passage. Put it into your own words. It, uh, it is a misunderstanding. People believe or adults believe that children need to eat as much as possible in order for them to grow, but this is not true. So basically, take these. Here, puppy fat, children need to... Uh, eat as much as possible to grow, and extra kilos only mean a healthy, healthy appetite, and just give it back to the examiner in your own words. Therefore, they have capitalized those words in your own words. Essentially, two from the first paragraph uh, in your own words. Okay. One point two. Refer to paragraph two, meaning you've now done with paragraph one. That answers for the next questions for 1.2.1 and 1.2.2 can be found in paragraph 2. Childhood obesity is referred to as a global fact. Read the question slowly. As much as you've read the passage, you've understood the passage, you've underlined the important points, you've underlined uh, the main uh, ideas in each of the paragraphs, you need to understand the question. One of the major problems. One of the major problems in the exam is that you've read the passage, you've understood the passage, but you have not understood the question. You've rushed through the question, read it through quickly, misunderstood and given the incorrect answer. So when you are reading the question, read the question slowly. Ensure that you understand exactly what the question requires. Bino, there's another thing that I also read on the page. A mindset that said, can we write on our exam paper? Can they can they outline things? Can they circle things? Can they circle things? Like so, when they're reading the passage, can absolutely they yes. yes. Underline, highlight, circle, wha anything that will allow this information to jump up at you when you read the questions. Absolutely, you should be highlighting. You should be circling. You should be. Um, did I mention underlining? Yes. You should be highlighting. Do whatever you need to do. To, yes. You're going to be taking this paper home. Do whatever you need to do so to, facilitate, to facilitate better understanding so you can understand it better. Hmm. Is that it? Perfect. All righty. Mm -hmm. Childhood obesity is referred to as a global fact. Keyword, global, global internationally, everybody. What does the term global mean? I've just given you the answer. What does the term global mean in the context of the passage? What does this mean? In the context of the passage, meaning as it is used in the passage. So they want to know the term global, oops, sorry, <laughs> in the context of the passage as it is used in the passage. On your first reading, after your second reading, and hopefully you have time to do a third reading, you would have been able to suss this answer out. You'll be able to figure this answer out. Global, coming from the word globe, so meaning the world. All you need to say globe, it's worth one mark, by the way. So don't write a paragraph. You need to give a, um, a clear sentence, basically, a succinct sentence. What does the term global mean in the context of the passage? It means international. It, me it refers to everybody in the world. If you said it refers to the globe, which is reference to the world, that's perfectly acceptable. Again, I'm reminding you of the mark allocation. Previously, earlier on in the show, uh, I recall watching uh, a few exam tips, and there it was mentioned that you need to be weary of the mark allocation. If it is worth one mark, you might get away with a one-word answer, but let's not take that chance. Rather, go with one clear sentence that has your answer in that sentence. Do not go on and write a paragraph for just one, one mark. 1.2.2. Explain how being overweight as a child. Explain. Explain. You're not going to get away with a one word answer here. Explain how being overweight as a child. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm underlining key points or key words in, in the question so that it will um, so you'll help you understand the question better. 
Overweight as a child can affect you later as an adult. Go back to the passage. Remember that we had mentioned earlier in the passage uh, physical factors and emotional factors? There was a reason why that was included in the passage. Later on as an adult, name one physical factor and one emotional factor, one physical factor. Let's go back to the passage. This is something you should never be afraid of doing, going back to the passage, because the answers are in front of you. That's the beauty of comprehension. The answers are in front of you. You need only understand the requirement of the question. Once you understand what the question requires, you need to basically go back to this comprehension passage and pick out that answer. And again, I want to remind you about the highlighting and the underlining and the circling. Once you've done that, finding that answer in here just makes it a little bit easier. OK, let's look at it. Decreased physical activity. No, here, sorry. In, in paragraph 2, we are. Where am I? Here we go. For these children, the risk of becoming overweight adults and catching various illnesses. You will remember that when you were reading, you had underlined this, because this was the physical, the physical effect of children who are, who are overweight, the, the, the future consequences, what will happen to them as adults, physical consequences. Catching various illnesses, you could say that, or you could say as an adult, you could become overweight. Remember physical, that's what you can see, that's what is happening outwardly. All right? And emotional, what would be? What would be the emotional effects of children who, who are overweight? Emotional issues like, you can say, people can suffer. Either you can mention discrimination, people can uh, be exposed to discrimination, or you could say they could have poor self-image. I just want to take you back to that question. So you can say physical. You could say they can be overweight. Or, and I'm not saying that I've done both, you could say they could be overweight as adults, or you could say they could have, um, they could contract certain illnesses, diseases, all right? And then you could say emotional. The emotional would be they could suffer discrimination or they would have low self-esteem. Setting your answers out this way just helps the, helps the marker to identify where, uh, where, you where you've scored the mark. And, and neatness, the way you present your work is very important. So if, you, if they've asked you now for one physical, one emotional, you write on physical, write on emotional, and give them one, um, one emotional effect and one physical effect. OK, let's move down. Both text A and text B and answer the questions. Refer to paragraph 3. Give two reasons why children become overweight. I'm going to refer you to this here. Two reasons why children become overweight. Go back to the passage. This that I'm doing here is something you will have to do in your exam. Re it doesn't matter if you read the questions three times or four times. Read the question, go back to the passage. Do it in stages. What are some of the reasons why children become overweight? Here. In some cases, children inherit this from their parents, so that, that could be the, one of the reasons, all right? So that can be blamed for weight gain. Lifestyle issues. One of the main reasons, here's the answer right here in front of you. One of the main reasons for childhood obesity is the steady global shift in diet towards energy dense foods. Put that into your own words. It's always advisable to write in your own words, unless you are asked to quote. Global shift in diet towards energy dense foods, which are high in fat and sugar, but low in nutrients. Another reason for weight gain. So here, there's the answers in front of you. Another reason. You'll not write that down in your answer. You'll simply choose from here, and you'll choose from here because it's a two-mark question. Decreased physical activity. You can expand on that. Even if you wanted to take it out of the passage and said decreased physical activity, you'll say decreased physical activity. You'll say children are engaged in activities that do not require much, phys much physical activity these days. Their, their forms of entertainment require for them to essentially be couch potatoes or to be inactive. And that is one of the reasons that they are overweight. Remember, it is called a comprehension passage. What does the examiner want to test? He wants to test whether you have comprehended, whether you have understood. So try as hard as possible to give them information in your own words. All right, let's move along. One point four. Refer to paragraph four. Using your own words. This is to help you. 
every time these instructions are capitalized, it is to help you. It is giving you a direct instruction as to what the examiner is looking for. Here they want you to use your own words. Explain how increasing urbanization, you need to highlight or underline this because it will tell you exactly what the question entails, can lead to weight gain. Increasing urbanization can lead to weight gain. I think we need to go to an ad break, Indy. I see. <laughs> let's, let's do that, guys. I see so many of you are tuning in. Ashworth, um, Mosar, Kid to me. I'm so glad that you all are enjoying the lesson. Guys, if you do have any questions, don't be afraid. Post them to our page. Post them to me at facebook.com forward slash learn extra or chat to me on Twitter. Guys, you can help each other out as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to a short little break and we'll see you now. Hi guys and welcome back to Winter School. We're having such a fun time. Um, I hope you are too. And if you have been watching, you would have seen the competition in between the ad breaks. So I hope you've got your answers coming in thick and fast. And I see on the page here, Wise is joining on, Mkubo is joining it, Londani, Nkololeko. Yeah. But before we start, I know that I've said to you guys that in the competition, you're winning two CDs and an awesome mindset book. But I just want to show you this awesome t-shirt. Okay, okay, director, follow me here. It's the most awesome t-shirt and this oh QR code nice actually works, yeah. So if, if you do have a phone that scans in the QR code, it will actually take you to a roaming website wherever we put up new content and it's really cool. And if you have a look, we've got a little quote there at the back, which is really, really cool. So you will be getting this awesome, awesome t-shirt. So, Bino, you know, I think, take it away with the lesson and let's learn more, let's learn extra. And it's back to the comprehension. Before we went to ad break, we were on... 1.4.1 and um, just to go over that question again using your own words and I was reminding you that the reason why these questions are well in your own words is it's comprehension essentially it is there to check whether you've understood whether you've comprehended what's in the passage so when they ask you to use your own words you need to show the examiner that you have indeed grasped what's in the passage using your own words explain how increasing urbanization Increasing urbanization can lead to weight gain. Firstly, get your mind around this increasing urbanization. What do you understand by the word urbanization? When things become too urban, there's um, too many buildings, too many cars. Things, uh, think rural. If you're struggling here, think rural, that which happens in, in the rural areas and that which happens, uh, that which we have in urban areas, in cities. What do we have? We've got more restaurants. So you could, um, I'm just giving you a clue here. We've got more restaurants and less place to walk. All right, and less place to walk. There's also um, transport that's easily accessible. It's dangerous. Because of urbanization, it's dangerous to be in the city. It's dangerous for people to, to, uh, to walk around and get any physical activity. So that's, that is the vein of thought you have to be veering on. That is what you need to have in mind when you are explaining to the examiner um, how Increasing urbanization has led to weight gain. The, because there is more urbanization, mention the word more, he'll understand that you know what increasing is. Because there is more urbanization, it takes away opportunities for us to be physically active. Restaurants, fast food restaurants are easily accessible to us in urban areas and, uh, y y well, we're eating a lot of junk. But in terms of, uh, so that contributes to the weight gain. There's less place, as I said to you, mentioned to you, to, to walk around. Public transport, private transport is easily accessible. It's just not safe to be walking around. So you can mention something, um, points to, to that effect. All right. Uh, it's worth one mark. So I suppose if you had taken just one of those and expanded on it, you will score the one mark. 1.4.2. Is the following statement true or false? This is a two-part question. All right. So you need to, is the following statement true or false? Give a reason for your answer, right? First part, you need to determine whether it is true or false. Comma, then the reason for your answer. Um, okay, let's look at it. In South Africa, the crime rate has no effect on childhood obesity. Think about this. Think, think about it practically. They, ma they are making a statement. They want you to agree or disagree with the statement and then, well, motivate. In South Africa, the crime rate has no effect on childhood obesity. Really? 
Think about it logically, really. Think about the passage. Consider how it is mentioned that people are afraid. They are safety issues. They do not want their children to ride to school or to walk to school alone. That is a safety issue. Why is there a safety issue? Because of the crime. All right? So crime does affect. It does affect childhood obesity. How? Firstly, you need to say that this statement is false. That's the first part. All right? Comma. False, comma. Give a reason for why it is false. You need to say, because the crime rate is so high, Parents have safety issues. They, they are afraid to allow their children to ride to school. They are afraid to allow their children to walk to school alone. And therefore, they are transporting their children. And because they are transporting their children, these children are not getting any, any exercise. They're not riding. They're not walking. They're not cycling. So they're not getting any exercise. And that is indirectly con contributing to childhood obesity. Children are getting fatter because they are being transported to school as opposed to getting some sort of physical activity due through walking or due to cycling. you have a question, Indy? Um, do we have a question? Okay, we do actually have a question here on the page. Let me just have a look. Um, just give me two seconds. Okay, now this one's from Nuhubo, and he asks, instructions say answer in your own words, but what happens if your own understanding is the same as what is written in the text? I suppose that's a, a bit of a double-sided yeah, question, you, you right? You paraphrase it and think of a way to give it back, in your own words. Uh, put in a because. Oh, the passage says that children should be... Um, try and add in a few words here and there that, 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 that will make it look as though it's, it is now your own words. You understand it like the way it's written in the passage, okay, but there should be another way to, to mention, there should be another way to rewrite that to give it back, mm. basically. I agree. A few conjunctions yeah. here and there. And because of this, then, then bring in the information from the passage. Clever use of language, which only comes about from reading. Extended vocabulary. Extended vocabulary will come about from extensive reading. Listening, watch the news. So uh, use the language often, read often, and this will allow you to actually use information from the text and simply in the, with the addition of a word or two here and there, give it back to the examiner in your own words. Perfect. And in the minute you add a couple of words here and there, it actually does become your own words. For as long as it is not verbatim, as is out of the text. All right, let's move to the next question. Refer to paragraph five. What is the difference? What is the difference between inherited Inherited factors that affect weight gain and lifestyle factors. Inherited factors and lifestyle factors that affect weight gain. Do not quote, here you are. Do not grab chunks from the passage and merely rewrite it as your answer. Again, they are testing your understanding. The difference between inherited factors, first you need to understand the question. What is an inherited factor? That which you receive from your parents that which is inevitable, you will, you will inherit that from them, you will get that from them. And then we're looking at lifestyle factors. Lifestyle factors, uh, the way you live your life. There you have a choice in how things are being done. Inherited factors, you don't have a choice because they, you are receiving that from your parents. Let's go back to the passage. Okay. Here we go, paragraph five. Inherited causes need to be managed medically. Just bear that in mind. Underline it or highlight it. Inherited factors need to be managed medically. Lifestyle factors can be changed or improved. This is fairly straightforward. But remember, the last part of the question clearly instructed you not to, not to quote from the passage. So what, what do you need to say? Factors that we inherit from our parents or, ca or traits that we, we get from our parents, we receive, that which we, cannot, um, that which we cannot change, these need to be managed medically. We need to um, handle these medically. We need to uh, have medicine to help us to, to manage this. Um, lifestyle factors, but on the other hand, lifestyle factors can be changed or improved. Factors which are inherited, cannot be changed, we just need to learn to manage it me medically, but lifestyle 
but lifestyle factors can be changed. Can you already see that difference coming out there, that inherited factors cannot be changed, you just need to manage it medically, as opposed to lifestyle changes, uh, sorry, lifestyle factors, which can be changed or improved. On the one, you need to show them, the difference is that with inherent factors, there's nothing that you can do. You just, you need to manage it medically. And you, they can't be changed. As opposed to lifestyle factors, you have control over that. You can change that and you can improve your lifestyle. The question requires that you show the difference between inherent, inherited factors and lifestyle factors. So that is in your answer, when you read your answer. After you've read this and understood exactly what the difference is, you need to make sure that when you present it in your answer, the difference stands out for those two marks. Okay, let's move back. Choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence. Write down only the question number and the letter. Brad Bing is described as the driving force, they've underlined that for you, behind sporting chance. This means that, um, I want to draw your attention to certain words, words that you will come across in a passage that you may not have seen previously. Obviously, in an exam, you're not going to have your dictionary. But you need to learn through your practice exam papers. You need to learn how to work out the meanings of words within context. What is the meaning of that? All I'm saying to you is, look at the way the word is being used in the passage. Consider the passage globally and try and figure out how the word is being used in this paragraph or in this particular passage. If they are saying to us, Brad Big is, des Bing is described as the driving force behind sporting chance. What could that possibly mean? Try and replace this with another word. He is the owner, maybe, or he is somebody who's not supporting it. If you said somebody who's not supporting it, that doesn't make a lot of sense here. So you need to be able to, you need to be able to work out the meaning of the word as it is within context. So if someone is the driving force, here are the four options. Sometimes supportive, if something is driving, does it mean that it's sometimes or hesitant? I don't think so. Physically strong, he is the physically strong behind sporting chance? No. The inspiration, now take this, these words inspiration and replace them. Um, and replace driving force. Brad Bing is described as the inspiration behind the sporting chance. Does that make more sense? Or the last one, oh, he is the driver. Now, if you said that he was the driver, it means you haven't truly understood the figurative uh, use of the word driving force. And these types of understandings will only come about once you read extensively. The word driving here is not really literally meant as driving. So you can't say that he is the driver. If you say Brad Bing is described as the driver behind the sporting chance, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Quite obviously, the answer here is C. In these type of questions, a little tip would be to replace the underlined words with the options that they've given you. And once you've done that, you'll be able to figure out which one actually suits this, um, suits this best. OK. Let's move to the next question. Money smart. Money resolutions you can stick to. New Year's resolutions are all very well, but you need to make them realistic if you've got any chance of keeping them. Read the text in conjunction with the picture. Look at the picture and read the text, because obviously they are related, all right? Choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence. Write down only the question number and the letter. That is A to D. Refer to the following. Money resolutions you can stick to, what are these? Ellipsis dot, it tells you that it's not complete, all right? In the context of text B, the words stick to mean, right. Let's try what, I, what we mentioned early on to replace the underlined words. Money resolutions you can stick to, money resolutions you can keep to, money resolutions you can paste, money resolutions you can promise, money resolutions you can grow. Which one do you think is most appropriate? I would say keep to. Money resolutions that you could keep to. 
If you said grow again, you've misunderstood and you've looked at it um, too literally because you've seen the tree and you assumed it was grow. So, so just be careful with that. Replace the underlined the underline words with the options and see which one makes more sense to you. 1.12. In your own words. I'll remind you again, comprehension. In your own words. Have you understood? Are you able to reproduce the information? That is why they always say to you, in your own words. Because remember, the focal point, the, the, purpose, the purpose of this comprehension is to check whether you are able to read, understand, and reproduce information. That's essentially what comprehension is. In your own words, explain what is meant if your New Year's resolutions are realistic. What is... In your own words, what do, they, what do you mean by that? If you want to explain to someone, so in your own words, explain to me what does it mean when someone says, my New Year's resolutions are realistic. So you need to say to them, I understand that a person's New Year's resolutions are realistic if the resolutions are something that they can keep to. Notice the answer is somewhere on the top there, right? Money resolutions you can keep to, all right? So the new, re new Year's resolutions are resolutions that you can keep to, things that you can stick to, things that are practical, things that are doable, things that are not uh, over the top and you've set yourself too high expectations and you, eventually, um, and you eventually disappoint yourself. Again, guys, this comes from extensive reading. It comes from using the language um, often, frequently. So these kind of questions, whilst the answers are in in the actual passage or in, in, well in the paper, it a lot depends on your reading and your, um, your use of the language, your knowledge of the language. Explain what this text suggests about New Year's resolutions. Go back to the text. What does it say to you about New Year's resolutions? This lady is trimming the tree. This is the tree of her expenses. Her one, what do you think is possibly her New Year's resolution if she's trimming the tree, if she's trimming down the expenses? She's trying to cut down on spending. So you need to be able to interpret that. And then you need to be able to tell the examiner what you've interpreted from this. So you need to say, um, the text implies, or the text shows, or, or you could say, tell them what you see. The lady is trimming the trees. It is, the tree, it is a tree of expenses. By trimming the leaves of the tree, she is, in, she is telling us that she wants to cut down on her expenses. She wants to spend less money. She wants to be less lavish. She wants, that's it. She wants to be less lavish. And that's it. Explain what? Explain two marks. Right? So you need to have an answer with a bit of substance. Say two to three lines, maybe even four if you can push it. But explain what you see in the, um, in the text. Explain what you see in the text, what you understand from the text, and exactly how the text speaks to the picture, what, you, what, under, what you've understood from what you've seen. So in your explain for what this text ex suggests about New Year's resolutions, that's exactly what you would say, that she's trying to save, she's trying to save money, spend less, and all of that. India, I believe we're due for an yes, ad break. Yes, we're due for an ad break, but I think what we might do, you know, if you're okay with it, is that we might actually tackle the challenge question round about now. Actually, let's do it after when the break. When we come back from the break? Yeah, let's do it when we come back from the break. Guys, This I'm going to give them a last chance to get those answers in. I think It's that's a beautiful t-shirt. Yeah. It's so <laughs> worth it. <laughs> Guys, it's awesome. Get those answers in now. We're going to go to an ad break. So, and then as soon as we get back from break, we're going over the competition. And that means that the competition is closed. This is your last chance to win um, two CDs, now 60, and the Lulu Decana, as well as a book of your choice, Mindset Textbook, which will help you with those exams. Um, guys, it's really awesome, but what we're going to do, take a break. See you now. Hi, Grade 12s. Welcome back to Winter School. We're having an awesome English FAL lesson. I know I'm having info. fun. Well, I'm actually, I'm so excited um, for, for the competition that I'm almost ready to, 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 to announce the winner, but actually we've got a little bit more time. So you've got about 15 more minutes to get those challenge questions in. Um, just in case you missed it, I'm going to read it out for you quickly. It is, the object was placed on the table. The sentence is an example of A, direct speech, B, passive voice, or C, 
active voice. So guys, get chatting. There are many ways to get to us on this question. You can chat to us on the Facebook page. Also, you can SMS us. You can email us at win at learnextra.co.za and you can also chat to us on the Peptext group and the Peptext group's name is Learn Extra. Um, keep those questions coming. I see there's a whole bunch. There was even a question on Tipex. Um, Vino, would you, would you like to address that quick? I, I know. I don't think... Um, I would like to address that question. I don't think it's advisable for you to, for you to use Tipex. It, it's actually not advisable. Don't... Rather strike it off neatly and rewrite, but don't, do not use Tipex. It's not advisable to use Tipex at all. I wouldn't advise it. Okay, thank you, you know. Take it away. Okay, guys, we are looking at, we're moving into the language, um, the language section, particularly visual literacy. In visual literacy, you can be tested on either the advert or the cartoon. And we're going to be looking at the cartoon today. Well, particularly the cartoon. Turn that rap junk down. Now, when you look at a cartoon, you need to pay attention to linguistics, that is the language that is being used, how the language is being used, and you need to pay very careful attention to body language. And in no, I don't think any, any answer in an exam will just be body language. You need to be specific. Examiner wants, remember it's visual literacy. Examiner wants to check whether you have actually been able to identify certain visual aspects. Turn that rap junk down. Notice the boy, notice his hands are up. And um, if, if you look at the dad and the way he's speaking, notice uh, the, um, the marks here tell you that he's talking loudly, all right? Um, the exclamation marks here tell you that he's talking, tell you that he's talking loudly. The musical notes all around the boy indicate that the music is fairly loud. So where in visual literacy you are actually, you are, will be reading the, the actual words in the cartoon, you will need to pay attention to what the characters are doing, their facial expression, their body language, the way they're standing, the way they look at that time, uh, um, be, uh, uh, where, their hands, where their hands are, I stuff like that. Frame two, after a hard day's work, the last thing I want to hear is gutter language set to music. Again, the exclamation, meaning that he's firm, he's talking down to him. But Dad, that's the way rappers keep it real. What do you notice about this? You'll no you need to notice that this has been written in bold. All right? So when you're reading it, if you, when you studied punctuation, you would you remember that when a word has been bold, or when it's written in capital letter, it needs to be emphasized, or it needs to be read with emphasis. But Dad, that's the way rappers keep it real. It's the language of the streets. Turn it down, or you'll be living in the streets. Notice the word living, again, is in bold. They want, they want to emphasize the way it was mentioned, the father mentioned. Turn it down, or you'll be living in the streets. So to show you that this word was emphasized in his speech, it's written in bold. Wow, that is one big blue... <laughs> Blue vein you have in your neck. His father's threatening him to live on the street, and what's he looking at? He's looking at the blue vein in his father's neck. So that, that's basically the humor there. Okay. Refer to frame one. We've made it very easy for you. We brought frame one over. In your case, you're going to have to refer, go back to, the, go back to the actual cartoon in your paper. How does the cartoonist show that the music is loud. How does the cartoonist show that the music is loud? The fact that the father has to scream, the fact that the father has to scream to the son, all right? Um, these musical notes here tell you that the music, that the music is loud. Um, and how you can mention that he's used double exclamation marks to show us that he's screaming, and then in from, from that you can see he has to scream because the music is loud. All right, um, let's move down. Consider the words and the illustration, all right? So for it's worth two marks. You can say that the words were written in capital letters, meaning that the father was shouting loudly. You can say that um, well the father was shouting. You could say that there's exclamation marks indicating that he has been shouting. And if you show the, if, if you are using the illustration, then you can use these. You can say that there are musical notes all around. To, to indicate that the music was loud. 
How does the illustration show that the father and the son disagree about rap music? How does it show the illustration, the picture? How does the picture show that the father and the son disagree about rap music? Yes, look at the way he's standing. The father's standing upright and he's, he seems more strict and more firm. The son, on the other hand, is relaxed and he's dancing. He has a different opinion. His, his attitude towards this music is different. He's enjoying it. The father looks frustrated and annoyed. He looks like he's not enjoying it. He has to scream at his son, as opposed to the son who's smiling and his hands are up in the air, and he definitely seems to be enjoying it. So the question is, how does the illustration show that the father and the son disagree? Have you mentioned how, it show, how the actual picture shows that they disagree with the fact that the father is screaming, the fact that he's standing upright, his hands are, uh, are at his side, meaning that he's... Well, well, he wants his son to listen to him, and the son. The difference, and the son is d he is dancing. His hands up in the air. He's got a smile on his face, and he's definitely enjoying this. Refer to frame two. After a hard day's work, the last thing I want to hear is gutter lang gutter language set to music. Explain why the word last is written in a different font. Luckily, they'll tell you what font is. Font is type of writing, all right? Go back. Here, this is what they're talking about. Why is that written in a different font? They want you to, to explain how it's different from the rest of the text. How is it different? It's written in italics. It'd be good if you mention that, that you are able to identify that it's in italics. It's written in italics because they want us to understand that the father stressed that word. After a hard day's work, the last thing I want to hear is gutter language set to music. So you need to say, it's written in italics because the cartoonist wants us to know that the father emphasized that word. We impressed upon that word. Explain what the father means by gutter language. Explain what the father means by gutter language. Obviously, he's talking about the language that rappers use. Uh, s sometimes there's vul vulgarity in that language. Or essentially, he's talking, ab uh, he's he's talking about the language that, that music artists use. And obviously, he is not too. He's not too impressed with that type of music. So therefore, when he talks about gutter language, it's just a word. So I mean, it's just one mark. So I'd explain to them what you, what you feel that the father understands by the word, what he means when he says gutter language. Like, well, think of gutter, something that's dirty language, something that's unsavory, something that's not wholesome. So he feels that the type of music that his son is listening to is, is, is not good. It's, it's, it's unwholesome. It's, it's gutter language, basically. It's dirty language. Frame three. Choose the correct answer to complete the following sentence. Write down only the question number, 4.3, and the letter A to D. All right. Remember what we said earlier? We learned a little technique there where you can replace. Curtis's body language shows that, right, his body language. What is his body saying to you? Body language is how the body is speaking to you. Curtis's body language shows that he is apologizing to his father. Does he look like he's apologizing? This is how you would stand if you, look, if you were apologizing to someone. He likes rap music very much. He's ashamed of his father's behavior. Does not understand his father's reaction. From the way he's standing, from the way he's been drawn, his body language, what does it say to you? Does it say to you that he's apologizing? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. No, he's standing like this. When do people stand like this? When? But, but I don't understand. So obviously... He does not understand his father's reaction. Okay? Refer to frame four. Turn it down, or you'll be living in the streets. Earlier on, I'd drawn your attention to the fact that living is written in bold. Wow, there is one big blue vein on your, in your neck. Do you think the father's behavior throughout the cartoon is unreasonable? I want to draw your attention to this. Do you think, do you think, this is an opinion question. In an exam, you never leave out an opinion question. You, these are the type of questions that can score you the mark. 
especially if it is well substantiated, more especially if it's well substantiated. They're basically asking you for an opinion. Everybody's entitled to an opinion. But remember, your opinion needs to be well substantiated, well motivated, rooted in the text. Okay? Do you think the father's behavior throughout the cartoon is reasonable? Give two reasons for your answer. So you get, you're, not getting an you're not getting a mark for yes or no. You're not getting a mark for you saying, yes, it is reasonable, or no, it's not reasonable. You're actually getting the mark for two reasons for, for why you think the father is either being reasonable or he's being unreasonable. And this is your opinion. This is how you feel. This is how you think. If you feel the father is being reasonable, you'll say, yes, I feel that the father is being reasonable. The two reasons are he's come home, um, home very tired from work and he wants to have some peace and quiet. His son is making a lot of noise and he can't understand. Um, well, he's, he's getting cross at his son because he's becoming frustrated with, with the music that his son is listening to. And it's, the child should be considerate. Anything, or you could say, no, he's unreasonable. Um, he's come home from work, he can maybe sit in another room, or he's, uh, he's not allowing his son to listen to the music that he likes. He is, uh, uh, he's threatening his son. You can say that he's threatening his son but telling him that he will live in the streets. Basically, it comes from you. There will be a, a, a correct answer. There will, there will be two answers in the memorandum. But this particular answer comes from you and the way you think and your thoughts based on the way the father is reacting. All do you think answers or what is your opinion? How do you feel? All these type of questions must be answered because they are answers that can come are based on the way you think, then there's no 100% correct answer. So these are questions that can score you, score you the mark. Language and editing skills. For one word answers, write only the question number and the word. For multiple choice questions, write only the question number and the letter A to D of the correct answer. The question here is, read the following passage which contains some deliberate errors and answer the set questions. Guys, this is the um, textual editing part of the paper. This is where all your language knowledge comes in. Your spelling rules, your uh, rules on concord, um, everything that you've learned in class for language. This is where that knowledge comes in. So you need to draw on all of that knowledge. They will give you a passage that is riddled, well, not necessarily riddled, but that has a few errors, maybe some spelling errors and things, th which they will ask you to identify um, and to rectify. So you will have to identify what the incorrectly spelled word is, and they have to give the correct spelling of that word. The wheelchair-bound young man, a patient of me, a patient of me, whilst you're reading, these should stick out in your mind, was pushed to the stage of the high school to deliver his graduation speech. His face were still partially paralyzed and he spoke in a soft voice. But Mark Orsini delivered a powerful speech and was applauded by his fellow pupils. The 18-year-old had developed an illness causing paralysis. His parents insisted that he, he was a fighter, he would get through this and go on and go on to attend university. Meanwhile, immobile and unable to breathe, how was he going to ask questions or be involved in taking care of himself? Whilst you are reading for comprehension, reading for understanding, remember, um, in for textual editing, they are testing whether you are able to pick up the errors, the concord errors and the spelling errors. So as you are reading, these errors should stand out to you immediately. They should pop out of the, the paper to you. The solution was remarkable. The Orsini's would sit at Mark's side and recite the alphabet. When they got to a letter, Mark needed to spell a word. To spell a word, he'd nod yes. They would write it down, then start over and wait for him to nod again. They never lost, pa they never lost patience, and Mark was involved in every decision. After a risky proceed to filter his blood, he showed improve, and soon he could move his legs and arms again. I saw Mark again after his graduation. Mark was feeling great. I wanted to say I was in awe of him and that his parents were the amazing people I had ever met. Sitting beside his bed for hours, patiently listening to him, spell words could not have been easy. I wanted to say, I will never forget you or your parents and the sacrifices you have made, but words failed me. 
in, in this particular extract, you may reread the passage. But the, good, um, the tip here is that as you are reading the passage for the first time, as soon as the incorrectly spell words or incorrectly use words, um, as soon as you identify them as you're reading for the first time, highlight them or underline them immediately such that you can uh, use them when the questions are asked. I think we need to go to an ad break, Indy. Let us go to an ad break. I think I'm going to get myself a cup of coffee. Guys, do the same. Jump about. Get excited. And we'll see you now after the break. Hi guys and welcome back to Winter School Grade 12. Can you believe that we've only got 15 minutes left? Where did an hour and a half go? I just don't know. So what we are waiting for at this very moment is our team in the back. They've gotten all of your answers through SMS, through pep text, through email and through Facebook and they're trawling through. And what they do is that they're going to take um, a few of the correct answers from each platform, put them together, take out a name from the hat, and then they're going to let me know who the winner is of this awesome prize. So what I'm going to let Vino do is go through some of the lesson, and then as soon as I get the name, I'm going to stop her, and we will be announcing the winner of the competition, as well as going through the question. How exciting, Vino! Excellent. Hey. Good luck with that. Okay, let's look at the questions based on this passage. Remember I said to you, it's textual editing. They will give you a passage that has a few errors. You will be expected to identify the error and possibly correct the error. The wheelchair-bound young man, a patient of me, what's wrong with that? Was pushed to the stage of the, hi of the high school to deliver his graduation speech. Correct the single error. So there's one error here. You need only find one, because there is only one. Correct the single error in each of the following sentences. The wheelchair-bound young man, a patient of me, a patient of mine. Okay? A patient of mine. So that the error was there. His face were still. One face, guys. One face. Their faces were. Many is were. But in this case, one. His face was still partially paralyzed. This should be his face was partially paralyzed. His parents insisted that he was a fighter. He would get through this and go and go on to, go on to attend university. There's the error here, go on to. Because when you pronounce this word, we don't say go on to. This is on to, step on to something. Go on to attend university. So this word needs to be separated. On to is when you're climbing onto something. To go on to something move, means to move into something. Or to progress from one thing to the next. They never lost Patience and Mark was involved in every decision. Look at the sentence. They never lost patience and Mark was involved in every decision. Only this word sticks out. What is this? These are patients in, in a, a doctor's patients or patients at a hospital. This should be patients. They never lost patience. So this word is incorrectly used. Right? So they never lost patience and Mark was involved in all of the decisions. India, are there any questions for us? Um, let me have a look. I'm just, sorry, I'm just, li I'm laughing because Snazzo said she's, she's tuning in. Hey, um, she's doing Twitter, Facebook, pep text, and emailing. So she's chatting to us on all different angles. She's <laughs> in the competition as well. <laughs> she, she is definitely into the competition. Guys, there aren't any questions, but what Snazzo has said on Facebook, and maybe you can reiterate that, is that she says, um, guys, make sure you know antonyms and synonyms. Good piece, good piece of advice to give? Antonym and synonyms. Mm. Read, read, please read. It's never too late. Please read. Poor yeah. vocabulary, limited vocabulary. That is the reason why you are um, grappling a bit with the comprehension, grappling with the language. You need to read, listen, watch the news. Any forms of English will help you. So that's what you need to be doing. You need to be reading. So and, and I'm saying to you, it's not too late. Start reading now. But reading Read is fun. Yes, reading is amazing. Reading it, is can, it can open your mind to Absolutely. the most amazing things. Yeah. Okay, um, let's move on to the... Um, ooh, here's a clue. Rewrite the following sentence in the passive, in the passive voice. 
and you need to, the, the sentence is, the 18-year-old had developed an illness causing paralysis. And they tell you, you need to start with an. So you need to say an illness, hyphenated word, hyphenated word, illness causing. Sorry about that, a couple of gremlins. Gremlins are creeping in. Illness. Causing paralysis. Was developed by the eighteen year old. What has happened here? The eighteen year old had, had developed an illness causing paralysis. You need to start with an an illness causing paralysis was developed by the eighteen year old. Can you see how you change the word around? An illness causing paralysis was developed by the 18 year old. This is a slight clue to the competition. So if you go back to the competition <laughs> question and you try and work it out like the way we did here, uh, you should be at the a front for of the line. At yeah. the front <laughs> of the line <laughs> for, th for that competition. And the next question choose the correct dictionary entries. Remember early on I said to you that. All of your language, everything that you've studied, remember the metric exam is such, everything that you've studied from grade 10 up until grade 12, actually from all of your schooling, uh, all of your language skills will be brought in here. In this case, we're looking at dictionary, uh, dictionary skills. Choose the correct dictionary entries from the following list to complete the sentence below. Immobile. OK, I'm going to allow you to have a look at that. Mark's illness. And the question now is based on this dictionary entry. Mark's illness caused him to become, how can you use the word immobile here? Immobilization. Would you say, include the word, put it onto your question paper, write it into your question paper and see if it makes sense. Mark's illness caused him to become immobilized. Caused him to become immobilized. However, this, which word can we use here? This immobilization did not prevent him from being successful. These questions, these are the mark scoring questions because the answers are right up front. All you need to do is take your pencil and slot the answers in and see whether it makes sense. If you said to me, Mark's illness caused him to become immobilization. No, that, does, that doesn't make sense when you read it out. But Mark's illness caused him to become immobile. You should rather say Mark's sentence be caused him to become immobilized, right? Because it is an adjective. You're describing how he became. You be, he became immobilized. However, this immobilization, you dis, uh, you're giving a name to his condition, immobilization. This immobilization did not prevent him from being successful. Here, your knowledge of verbs and nouns and adjectives, parts of, sp parts of speech and the way they are being used in a sentence, that's, that's the knowledge that you would be drawing on here. So however, this, oh, question uh. again. Oops, okay, well, well, obviously, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a sign because we actually do have the winner. <laughs> should we, should we go over it quickly? Or do you want to finish your question first? Allow me to finish the question. Shame, I'm going to let Vino finish her question Not first. Just that I guys, want to we've got the and winner. And once you know you've won, you're going to move away from the TV and I don't want you to do that. <laughs> Wise words. Okay, let's move along. Change the following sentence into a tag question by filling in only the blanks. Mark was going to be involved in his care. How would you change that into a tag question? Mark was going to be involved in his care. What's a tag? What, you, you need to understand what a tag question is. Wasn't he? Was he, he or wasn't he? Mac, Mark was going to be involved in his care, wasn't he? Wasn't he? So Mark was going to be involved in his care, wasn't he? That is a tag question. So that's how you've changed the sentence into a tag question. Vino. Okay. Yes. Okay, we're running out of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interrupt you and announce the winner. Are you excited? Because I am. 
Okay. I'm excited but not excited to stop. So, <laughs> but there's a person out there that's waiting for his prize in anticipation. So, okay. this is where we leave it and Let's we go to the competition. Exactly. I think we're going to have to, guys. Guys, if there is anything you're not understanding on the page, please let us know. We will have somebody help you out with those questions if there's anything that you're not understanding. So now, drum roll, please. Here is the winner. We picked them and they did come from Facebook. And the winner is Munaka Malodzi. So... Yay! Congratulations! Monaco, please can you email win at learn extra and let us know what your t-shirt size is. Small, medium, large or extra large. We don't mind, but just let us know. Um, also let us know what book you'd want and also your postal address, but I will be posting that on the page. And then we've got about three minutes left. Should we go over the challenge question? The competition question more like. Absolutely. Okay, yes. let's go over it now. Perfect. That's, yeah. The object was placed on the table. You started with the object. The object was placed on the table. The sentence is an example of direct speech. It can't be direct speech. Nobody, there are no inverted commas to tell you that it's direct speech. So immediately we rule that out. There are no inverted commas. Nobody's speaking to you to tell you that uh, the, the, the object was placed on the table. So that rule gets ruled out immediately. It's not actively being done. So we are going to say that it's not active speech. So obviously the next, the last option is passive speech. The passive voice, sorry. Oh, the object was placed on the table. It's happened in the past tense. The object was placed on the table. And therefore, we said that the correct answer here was passive voice. To those of you who got passive voice, good for you. Those of you who send the, sent in those answers, even better. And better luck next time. So if you haven't won this time, there are many, many more opportunities for you to enter and for you to win. So please um, continue to do so. Continue to enter and, con and keep your hopes up. And I'm sure that you will eventually win <laughs> something. Yeah. My last tips, final tips on for English paper one. You need to practice. Uh, you need to do as many exam, past your exam question papers as possible. Do not cheat, do not look at the memorandum first, but practice. Go over the comprehension, uh, the comprehension uh, questions, look at the style, look at the answers. The questions are being structured. Normally, the structure, well, thus far, the structure of the paper hasn't changed from last year and the year before. It's exactly the same. Get yourself familiar, get yourself used to the way the questions are being asked. Look at the actual format of the paper. Um, do as many summary exercises as possible. What happens is if you sit down in the exam and you're looking at this paper and the format for the first time, um, you do yourself a disadvantage because you, you, haven't, you haven't practiced something like this before. So as many um, practice exam question papers as possible. That is my um, advice to you to make sure that you go through as many question papers as possible. You, and you're having problems, take them in uh, to your teacher. If you are unsure about a question, discuss it with your friends. One of the best ways of learning uh, is, is where you explain things to, to your friends. So discuss it with your friends. Get into group discussions and... Um, but that's, that's exactly what they can do. Discuss amongst your friends and guys, discuss amongst the Learn Extra page. It's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Thank you so much, Liberty, for giving us the most awesome, awesome show ever. We have, we've had the best, best time. And guys, I hope that you are tuning in for the rest of the shows today. We run every day from nine until five. Um, let me have a look here. I think live is at three. That is accounting, cash flow, and interpretations of ratios. Thanks, guys. We had an awesome show. See you later. Bye.